Hey what's up everybody welcome back to a new video on the channel so in today's video we are going to check out Squarespace SEO and this is going to be a series where we cover the more advanced settings that you can change in order to increase your organic traffic to your Squarespace website. So this is gonna be the episode one of this series. So if you wanna learn more about Squarespace SEO, make sure you subscribe so you can watch the following videos that will be coming after this one. In today's video, we're gonna check out how we can optimize our titles and our meta descriptions, as well as our URLs on our Squarespace website. These are elements that might seem fairly easy to optimize, but today we're going to jump into the details, how we can maximize our organic performance with the help of some useful tips and tricks that will help you get more organic traffic. And let's just jump straight into the tutorial. So the first thing you will see when you land on your Squarespace website is going to be something similar to what I have in front of me right now. So this is a demo site that I have on my account. Obviously, you will have your website showing right here, uh, but this is a demo site. I've just imported a, a direct theme or or layout that is uh, usually the, the basics that you can import when you create your Squarespace website. Uh, so this is what we're gonna use for this tutorial. Um, if you wanna follow along each and every step, I recommend you to just open up your Squarespace website and follow along each and every step as I do these changes. And if you don't have your Squarespace website just yet, please make sure you use my link down in the description below. Uh, that way I do get a kickback when you do sign up for the premium plans using Squarespace. And I do appreciate that. Okay, so when you are on the Squarespace page, uh, you'll have your pages, design, e-commerce or commerce, marketing, scheduling, analytics, profiles, settings, and help. Uh, what we're gonna jump into now is gonna be the marketing part. Uh, under marketing, you'll have SEO and location management. Location management, we are gonna cover in another video, but for now, we're gonna jump into SEO. In the SEO tab, you'll have the search appearance for your homepage, your pages, and your items themselves. So items will be your product. Um, under the homepage, you can see that I've already done a, a, an example of a SEO title format. So the SEO title format is what's gonna show up in Google when you search for a, a specific question, uh, or if you're searching for a specific product, what you'll see is that all of these search results will have a title and also a description as well as the URL themselves, uh, which kind of describes what's on the page, but it doesn't only describe what's on the page. So what's happening behind the scenes that the owner of the website is optimizing to actually rank for these specific keywords, uh, which is exactly the same thing that we want to do right now. So if we go onto Google and search for Nike shoes, we can see that there are listings on Google in the organic search. So Nike will be the number one, their title tag, or as they call it on Squarespace, the SEO title format uh, is going to be Nike, just the way Nike.com. And then they'll have their meta description describing uh, their company and what they do and using those call to actions to try to get you to click onto their website. Uh, moving on, we'll also have the, this is going to be the local business listings. Um, we're going to cover this as I said in another video, but this is essentially stores that are close to your current location. But if we go down to the organic search, we'll see that there is another brand or retailer that's also optimizing for Nike trainers, even though it's not Nike. This is just a retailer selling the Nike shoes. Uh, so their title tie is gonna be Nike trainers, Nike shoes for men, women, and kids, uh, and their brand shush uh, or something like similar to that. And then you also have the meta description themselves. So step on and style with a range of Nike trainers from the Nike Air Max uh, and Air Force One Classic Nike Blazer, order online at Shush today. So a pretty clear call to action as well, order online at Shush today, which is their call to action that they use. But if we jump back into our Squarespace dashboard, we are now gonna have to look into our title tag for our homepage and also the uh, SEO site description. So this is something that's gonna describe your homepage, your company, what you do, um, and you kind of want to try to put in some kind of keywords, but at the same time mentioning your brand and also having that call to action or make yourself stand out in your organic listings. In this example, our brand is going to be a, a plant store in central London. So what we're trying to do is get some people to maybe order online, but we're also trying to get some of that foot traffic inside our store. So the name of our, our test brand or our fake brand is going to be Organic Flowers Company, Organic Flowers, that's the name of our brand. Um, then you'll have the keyword 
or something that's relevant to the brand that you have or what you do that's relevant to your homepage. So in this example, it will be flower store, central London, and then you'll have plants from five pounds or $5, which will be um, not a call to action, but making your listing stand out in the organic search, which will make people more likely to click on your listing compared to other listings in the organic search. If we did something else, so maybe we are a cafe, so I would put cafe central London, uh, maybe we are a cinema in central London. So this kind of works with every kind of keyboard and it doesn't have to be central London. Uh, it can be maybe Toronto or New York. Uh, so this is just, if you are a local business trying to get that local traffic, you want to make sure you have that local keyword because when people are looking for that local cafe, they're going to search for either a cafe near me or they're going to search for a cafe uh, in a specific place. So in in London or in New York or in Toronto. So you want to make sure you have your location as well right here. But if you're not doing any, anything that's very local, if you're doing just an online e-commerce business, you can also have something else here. So maybe um, shop bikinis online or shop bikinis for kids or uh, shop, uh, shop women's clothes for oversized women, whatever it is, as long as it's relevant to what you do and what's on your website, that would make sense to have in the title. But we're not only trying to optimize for search engines here, we're also optimizing for people. So having something that makes your listing stand out, such as plants for, from five pounds, or maybe adding a emoji to your title, uh, title tag is also something you can do to make your listing stand out. A tool I would recommend you to use when you are customizing your title tags is going to be uh, the, the technical seo.com they have a google search simulator so what you can do here is basically preview how your listing will look in google it's fairly similar to what you have on squarespace themselves uh, but on the google search search simulator you can kind of see where your meta description or title tag gets caught up so if we move on to the site description or the meta description of our homepage. I have the example here, which is Flower Delivery Central London by Organic Flowers Company or whatever you want to call it. Free London Flower Delivery Specialist. We're open 24 hours a day. Flowers delivered Monday to Sunday. So in the meta description, it's not going to be a specific ranking factor, but what the meta description can help you do is increase that likeliness of people in the organic search clicking onto your listing. Uh, if your meta description is just empty or doesn't have anything specific inside of it, no one is really going to want to click on your listing. So it's very essential that you make a meta description that is appealing to users to click on, but also at the same time describing what your page is about. If you would make your meta description uh, everything is free, everything is free, and then they click onto your website and nothing is free. You just did that kind of trick people to go onto your website. People are not going to be satisfied with that result. They're going to go back into the Google search and find another website which actually has the information that they're looking for. The meta description itself should also align with the title tag. So it should kind of match uh, and make sense. Uh, between the two. Imagine that the title tag is just a title and the meta description is just your uh, paragraph describing the title. Uh, kind of like a newspaper or not any other website where you have the title and then you have a uh, paragraph underneath it. You'll also want to include your call to action and kind of incentivize people to click onto your site and keeping it about under 160 characters is usually where you want to keep it. And using the technical SEO tool, you'll see that you mentioned 157 would be where Google is starting to cut off your meta description. What Google does is that it doesn't matter if your meta description is 400 words long. What will happen is that Google will cut it off in order to make it fit in the organic search. So if we go ahead and copy Sunday here, and then we paste it in a few times, what you'll see in the preview on the side is that the meta description is gonna be cut off. This can be good. Let's say you have a blog post where you're talking about a specific topic and you wanna make people read more. Having that text being cut off could be beneficial if you're telling a story or telling something and then the story just gets cut off 
that will kind of incentivize people to click onto your site. But if you're selling a product, it's going to be a bit harder to have that kind of send device by just cutting it off. So I would try to keep your meta description under 160 characters or 157 as mentioned here. And this will kind of depend also if you're on mobile or if you're searching on desktop. By using the technical SEO tool, you can change to desktop view and see how the text itself will also look on desktop. But that is gonna be it for the homepage. We have finished creating our title and our site description for our homepage. So jumping into pages, what you will see that Squarespace uses is that they will have the title format. It is gonna be the title of the site itself, which is percentage S, and then the percentage P is gonna be the title of the page. So this here, if the page that we're on on our website has a title that is shop plans, it would be shop plans. And then you would have instead of my demo site right here, it would be organic, uh, organic flowers company or, or something along those lines. So this makes sense to have because this will automize all of your title tags across all of your pages. But if you only have a few pages, if you have five to 10 pages, I would recommend you to go in and actually do these manually because in most cases, you're gonna be able to create something that sticks out more and you can test various things. So if you put a title tag on your page and then after a few weeks or a few months, you can kind of tell that the click-through rate to your specific page in the organic search is fairly low and you want to try something else, you can kind of do some EB testing between your title tags by just changing them. But if you're running an e-commerce website or if you have a news site or whatever you do that requires you to have so many pages, it's definitely going to be the best option for you to just automize them across all of your pages because having a million pages on your site, it's going to be kind of tricky to go in manually and changing these by yourself. So definitely having these automated can be good if you're running a bigger site, but I would recommend you to actually go in and change it manually. So once we have changed this, we do like the format and we do like what's across. So items, this is going to be for your e-commerce items. We're not going to cover this for now. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and click save. So we have updated our homepage and our pages. We do have the format that Squarespace recommends. Uh, but from that, we're going to go back into marketing and then home. And then we're going to jump into our pages. Uh, let's say we want to change our or story page. Just click on the settings for that specific page and Then you'll have the general settings. So here you'll have the page title So this is what Squarespace would use using that format on to your title tag So it will be about us organic flowers company. That would be our title tag obviously we kind of want to change this even though our page is about us or the history be behind organic flowers uh, or whatever you want to put this as your page title, uh, we obviously want to go ahead and change that for this specific page because we might want to target some specific keywords that might be relevant for about us. Navigation title is going to be how it looks in your navigation. This you can basically put as whatever you want it to be. So you can see there's a difference here. Navigation title is our story, but the page title is about us. That all looks fine to me. So jumping forward into the URL slug, this is gonna be the URL for the page itself. Uh, you can have it as our story, or perhaps if you wanna implement some keywords into this as well, you can do that as well. So our story, our domain is already gonna be organic flowers. So we don't have to have our story organic flowers because our story is already mentioned uh, in the domain. So that doesn't really matter. But you can also add additional keywords here if it does make sense for your url so perhaps if this page was about the stories about our plants that we sell on the site maybe story behind our plants could be the url that you want to use for this specific page uh, but for this one we're just going to keep it as about us because uh, that kind of describes it fairly well so for your urls like generally you want to keep it kind of short uh, you want to make sure people when they see your url they can kind of understand what's on the page and it's also for search engines as well so google will understand what's on the page using these keywords in the url itself and also ensuring that you're not using any connection words such as this how when 
uh, and, uh, and, and, and words like that in your title is also a, a good thing to do and avoiding capital letters. So now we have changed what we wanted on the general settings. So jumping into the SEO settings for the page itself, you can see that our current title tag is gonna be about us, my demo site, which would be about us, organic flowers company. Now, we do wanna change this manually. So my demo site, that will be imported automatically to your uh, title tag, as this is already set up in our SEO settings that we went through. But if we want to change the about us, we can do that here. So perhaps we want to mention the story behind organic uh, flowers shop in uh, London. And that would be our title tag. And then you would have my demo site, which would be organic flowers shop. So you, you can kind of customize it here how much as you'd like. And I would recommend you to actually customize this. As I previously mentioned, it's super important that you make sure you're using the right keywords for these pages and at the same time, making sure it's user friendly so people actually wanna click on your listing in the organic search. So for the SEO description or the meta description, we wanna make sure that we are including something that incentivizes people to click onto the URL and perhaps including our keywords once again. So our meta description will be bold and also relevant for the user. So if your keywords are included that the user searches, they're gonna be more likely to click onto your site. For this example, I'll just copy the meta description that we already created for our homepage. It's super important here that you don't duplicate your meta descriptions as I just did. So you wanna make sure you put in the time and making sure that each meta description and title tag is very unique to that specific page and really narrowing it down the targeting that you have on the pages. If your page is talking about photography in Toronto, you wanna make sure your title tag is about uh, photography in Toronto. And the meta description is, we do wedding photography in Toronto. This is our prices, do, 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 do. we're open 24 seven. Whatever you wanna include in your meta description to make sure people actually click on your listing compared to other photographers in your area. And for our plant site, perhaps we're not only selling plants, perhaps we're also selling pots. So maybe one of our pages would be targeting plants in London, but another page, so if you also wanna sell our pots, we would have another page just targeting pot plants or uh, shop flower pots in London. And that would be our other page. We make sure we spread out our content across multiple pages and target different keywords for all of the pages. Otherwise, what happens in most cases is people try to target many keywords across the same page. But you, if you are a user searching on Google, you don't wanna land on a page that's covering a hundred other topics on the same page. If someone is searching to buy a flower pot in London, they want to land on a page that only lists them pots and not plants. Uh, so you really want to ensure that the user's search intent is met on your page. But with that being said, in your SEO page, something else we can cover right now because it's fairly quick, is that you can hide your page from the search result this will just put a no index on this page. So if you don't want this page to be found or indexed in Google search, you just click this right here and they will put a no index on the page itself and it will not appear in Google search. And that's not 100% guaranteed, uh, but in most cases, it will prevent Google from indexing your site. Once we have made all the changes to the, this specific page, we can click save. And then you wanna repeat this process across all of the pages on your site. And once again, I really think you should check out the tactical SEO tool when you write your meta descriptions and title tags. The tool is totally free and I'm not affiliated at all with this company, uh, but I really appreciate the service that they provide. Uh, and it's super useful when you actually create your title tags and meta descriptions, as you can really see how it's gonna look on desktop and on mobile when people search for your listing. But that is gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. And this is gonna be episode one of this Squarespace SEO series. So if you wanna learn more about Squarespace SEO, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any other videos on Squarespace SEO. And if you did enjoy, and if you learned something new from this video, please make sure to like this video and comment if you have any questions about Squarespace SEO or any other questions 
I'm happy to answer all your questions as best as possible. Also, don't forget to check out my social media. All of that is linked down below. You can check out my Instagram. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or just check out my Twitter, which I barely use ever. But if you want to follow me there, do so as well. But that is going to be it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.